obviously the biggest uh, story of the the week was the Las Vegas uh, massacre at a uh, country music festival. There's uh, 58 who were murdered, uh, 489 injured by uh, 64-year-old Stephen Paddock, who opened fire from the the se- 32nd floor of a uh, hotel. What is most perplexing is that uh, we we don't know a motive yet. So, in my opinion, it's hard to know what the uh, appropriate response is. But everyone's got an opinion on you know what must be done. Yeah, well, it's uh, obviously you have the people coming out, the uh, people who are looking to hijack this uh, sad event for political reasons, uh, calling for such things as gun control, you know, more background checks. Um, And and of course, that's what you expect. But but at the end of the day, um, this is uh, a very sad incident. It's a very terrible incident. And uh, we we should be looking for solidarity and um, and not looking to score uh, political points on our opponents. Uh, it, this this is one rare moment of unity where the NRA um, and critics uh, of the Second Amendment have come together and they've realised that there does need to be some form of uh, extra regulation done on these uh, bumper stocks that are put into, into rifles like um, your AR-15 rifle to make it more like the uh, the, uh, the the M15, I believe. Uh, so that that essentially makes the AR-15 a fully automatic rather than a semi-automatic um, assault rifle, uh, and that that is a dangerous thing. And uh, defenders uh, of the Second Amendment and people who are critics of the Second Amendment have come together and realised that this is the middle ground that we can come to. So I think that this is a tragic yet unifying uh, uh, horror in Las Vegas. Well, the reason why the NRA, they're always, you know, so sceptical of these, you know, calls for greater, you know, gun control is because even though these gun control advocates, they, like, they don't admit it, they always say, oh, you know, we support the the Second Amendment, you know, we don't want to take away your guns. What they always don't say is they'd like to if they could. I mean, if they could, you know, get away with, you know, confiscating, you know, most, you know, semi-automatic weapons having a national, you know, gun register, they they could. Good. So that that's why um, you know supporters of uh, firearm rights have always you know have felt that these gun control advocates have been very disingenuous. Oh, and the, and they've got reason to as well, uh, for sure. Um, and uh, a lot, lot about it is is scoring political points and not actually protecting the community. And you can't let um, your emotions get in the way of facts. For example, John Howard repeatedly claims that the uh, there has been no mass shootings since Port Arthur. And now uh, the FBI considers a mass shooting anything over four people. And I believe that we, we have seen an equal amount of uh, mass shootings since uh, prior to Port Arthur um, to, to afterward. Uh, and as well, you can look at statistics and facts. They're beautiful. Uh, most gun, uh, most massacres happen within gun-free zones where people are defenceless. Uh, that's another thing you've got to look at. But obviously, you don't want people uh, being able to get these bump, bumper stocks or, or whatever they're called and uh, to to massacre people in such a way. Uh, there is a very, very fine line between safeguarding liberty and protecting. Uh, the community from madmen, and I think that that is what the NRA and um, other Second Amendment groups do realise. So it's uh, even though the NRA's uh, you know put put out this call for regulation, it's not shared by everybody in the firearms community. There's another. Um, uh, to use the term, more radical Second Amendment organisation, Gun Owners of America, which has already said that you know the NRA is you know sold out. They've you know they've compromised too much on this. Well, I don't really think that they have because I don't. I I really I I believe that protecting yourself and protecting your your property, your family, that that is that that is a form of you know that is. That is great, you know. That's liberty, 
uh, that's safeguarded in the Second Amendment. But um, does one uh, need anything more than a semi-automatic assault rifle to protect one's family? Um, I don't really think so. You know, I'm I'm all on board with uh, the semi-automatic and the the not automatic. You know, but I think that uh, having an automatic you know um, assault rifle. Uh, you know, an AK-47, an M-15, walking around the streets with one of those, uh, I think that that isn't really... I think that's probably going... I'm no uh, expert on the US Constitution, but I really think that that probably does... probably overstep some constitutional marks as well. Um, but I think that the NRA is demonised. It's given a hard time. But I, I really do think that that is a mainstream group uh, and it's a group that uh, is interested in preserving liberty uh, and protecting people from the tyranny of government uh, and I do think it's a good group uh, but definitely I don't think that people need fully automatic guns walking around the streets I think that their liberty probably should go as far as being able to have a semi-automatic rifle such as an AR-15 and of course it's not just their uh, you know, people on the left calling for gun control. They've, you know, uh, as usual, usual, you know, tr uh, made a, you know, big deal about how, you know, Stephen Paddock was, you know, a white man, and you know, how come, you know, uh, we apparently treat, you know, uh, people of killers of different races, uh, you know, different, and you know, how come, oh, we're, you know, not calling it uh, terrorism. Well, yeah, there is there is a few interesting things to this. ISIS did claim that Paddock was one of their um, jihadis, one of their so-called freedom fighters for the Islamic Caliphate. Um, we're yet to see any proof of that. Um, the story of Paddock is an interesting one, though. He was a, a rec reclusive, uh, quiet and private man. He was uh, a professional gambler and a real estate agent and uh, a gun collector and he didn't appear to have any connections with Islam at all uh, and he, he didn't seem a particularly religious or a political uh, or a particularly political man so uh, his motives are a bit bemusing we, d we don't know what his motives are um, and also to, to throw a spanner in the works uh, to add some mysticism he wired $127,000 to his girlfriend in the Philippines. And we know that in some areas of the Philippines, there have been uh, massive uh, Islamic hotspots, big terrorism, but that, that's obviously more or less a conspiracy theory and um, it doesn't have any grounding uh, in evidence. But there, there are certainly uh, many things to think about here and one of them is, why didn't this man leave a note, and what was his motive? Yeah, I've noticed that there's plenty of uh, conspiracy theories, uh, you know, floating around, like, oh, maybe there was, you know, more than one shooter. I, I don't, you know, uh, indulge in those. But yes, it is perplexing that even nearly a week after, we don't know the, the motive. That's why I said it's hard to know, you know, what action to take. But... Yeah, uh, focusing back on, you know, what some leftists have said, like, obviously, it was interesting while Lee Dali saying, you know, this is happening, you know, all too often, and he did one of his rants again. Uh, but the thing is, though, he never does this after an Islamic terror attack. He never says, this is happening, you know, all too often, and something must be done. And also, even more uh, ridiculous was uh, Yasmin abdel Megid, who said, we wouldn't be talking about uh, gun control if the shooter was Muslim. Well... Last year there was the Orlando Gay Nightclub Massacre where the shooter was Muslim and I remember the exact same gun control discussion then, so she's actually wrong. Well, um, Yasmin abdul Magid is not much better than a joke. Uh, she doesn't have a clue what she's talking about and she's full of pointless platitudes and virtue signalling. Um, there was... Um, equal uproar between these people being killed in at a country music festival and the tragic massacre that happened at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Uh, so that just goes to prove that what she is saying is emphatically uh, incorrect and has it has no grounding in facts or reality. 
Um, also, I would have a lot more respect for uh, Wally Dali uh, if he called out uh, acts of Islamic terrorism as harshly and and with the same amount of vigor that he does with you know any uh, quote unquote mass shooting that happens in America. So I think that uh, Wally needs to uh, apply the same standards uh, to both uh, madmen walking around with AR-15s and jihadis blowing up kids in the streets of uh, Kabul. Yeah, and and certainly the the, the and always when the you know right when we you know may uh, have. You know, talk, talk about a response after a tragedy. We're always accused of, oh, you know, exploiting the tragedy. But it's funny the the left there, they're they're more than happy to do it, even if they don't uh, don't know the, the the facts themselves. Yes, well, Hillary Clinton, for example, you know, tweeting about this when she doesn't know the facts to, I don't know what for to sell books. It, it doesn't really make any sense to me, and I don't think that uh, it is healthy for us to indulge uh, in any conspiracy theory or to hijack this event for, you know, uh, political reasons. But certainly I do think that there is um, a need to ban these uh, bump stocks uh, or, or whatever they're called uh, because I think that it is, you know, welcoming carnage and chaos uh, if people are, are able to essentially walk around with a fully automatic weapon uh, within the streets. There is one thing of protecting yourself, your family, you know, um, your property, um, you know, and what have you. Uh, and then there's another thing, uh, walking around with a military grade weapon, um, which I find disturbing. I don't find it so disturbing having the right to a firearm such as a handgun or, you know, a rifle or even a semi-automatic uh, rifle such as an AR-15. But this man being able to, to legally buy semi-automatic weapons, put in a bump stock and massacre a group of people, I think this is a rare time where we can all agree that a little bit of regulation uh, couldn't hurt. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.